In this one, let's take a look at generating a power series representation of 1 over x plus 5, for example. And the first thing is we might be write this as 1 over 5 plus x. Why would I do that? Because I want to make it conform to a shape or an expression I recognize. Think back, if you're doing this class, that means by now you very likely have seen that 1 over 1 minus x equals the following summation notation from 0 to positive infinity of x to the n. And this is true when the absolute value of x is less than 1. So let's make our expression conform to this 1 over 1 minus x in shape. So I will do this. I'll take 1 over 5 plus 5 times x over 5. And I can do that because 5 over 5 is the number 1. I'm making it look different, but I'm not actually changing anything. But this is helpful precisely because now this 5 right there and that 5 right there can be factored out. And you can make the expression look like this. Take a look. You can write 1 over... 5, and then this is 1 plus x over 5, the way you see it right here. Now, this is kind of closer, but in the formula back at step 2, there's a minus between the 1 and the x. We have a plus. That means this is not enough. So to make it be enough, you got to do this now. Take a look, right? 1 over 5, and then rewrite the expression within the parentheses as 1 minus a negative x over 5, as is shown right here. And now... This negative is the one that's coming from the formula back here at step number two, which means the second negative in step three here, this negative has to stay with the x over the five. So basically you group those into a unit like that. Once you have that in place, next stage in the process is this one. Observe over here that, again, back at stage three, that 150 you can pull out. That's a constant multiplying it. And then the rest is one fifth times 1 minus the negative of x over 5. This portion only, right here, only this portion, is the one that you can represent with a summation. So take a look. Back at step number 4, I'm going to put the 1, 5. You need that constant. Okay, I'm copying that to stage 4. And then I'm going to put the summation notation, n equals 0 to positive infinity. And here, back in stage number 2, step number 2, where you see x right here, where you see that x, you replace that with the negative x over 5. Where you see x in the inequality, you also replace that with negative x over 5. You replace all of the x's. So that's going to give you now negative x over 5 to the n. And then you put here negative x over 5 less than 1 also, like that, for the interval. Then you proceed to work on this. So I'm going to continue down below at step number 5. You copy the 1 fifth. And simplify then the symbol here. So n goes 0 to positive infinity. Distribute the n to the x and to the 5 individually. So it's going to give you negative x to the n. And then the bottom now you will have 5 to the n. And the interval, I'm going to not write that for a while to save some space. So I can put step number 6 right here. I'll take care of the interval at the very end. So now I have 1 fifth. See, back at step 5, that 1 fifth is multiplying the entire summation notation, which means you can multiply it through the summation into its body. Therefore, take a look. I'm going to erase this portion right here, and we can simply proceed as follows instead. I will say summation notation from 0 to infinity, and you're multiplying that 1 fifth back into here. So I'm going to say now it's the negative x, and in the bottom, if I'm going to have 5 times 5 to the n, which means that step number 7 now, I will have the following. n goes from 0 to infinity, negative x. And then on the bottom, take a look. Back at step number 6, in the bottom, I have 5 to the first times 5 to the n. That's 5 to the n plus 1. That's a basic rule of exponents. You have the same base of 5, so then you add up the exponents. That's it. Here, if you wanted to, you could lastly rewrite it this way at step number 8. I'm going to separate this with a vertical line. I want to make sure that we're not getting things mixed up. It's a lot of writing here, obviously. At step number 8, I'm going to separate the negative from the x, and I'm going to write this instead. Take a look. I'm trying to show you every form that I can think of. So it's going to give you now negative 1 to the n times x to the n over 5 to the n plus 1. So I took at step number 7 right here. Okay, focus your attention there. That's a negative 1 multiplying the x. You can distribute the n to the negative 1 separately at step 8 and to the x separately at step 8. That's why it looks like that. 
And the last thing then is to fix up the appearance of the interval. So I'm going to go out back up to the top. I'm going to put step number nine here. And I'm going to say negative x over five is less than, for example, one. So what this means implies, that's what the arrow pointing to the right means, is that I can multiply everything by positive five. In other words, it's as if I did this. Look, because it's negative x over five and the five is positive, you can pull that out. You can basically pull it out as one-fifth positive and keep the negative x with an absolute value bar. It's like this. And then after that, you can multiply everything by positive 5 on both sides of that inequality. So it becomes 5 times that on both sides, you see? Which means essentially then at step 10, I cross off these 5s, I end up with the absolute value of negative x less than 5. And lastly, when you have the absolute value of negative x, it simply becomes the following, negative 1, like that, times x less than 5. You can separate the negative in front of the x into negative 1 times x. Then you pull that out. So lastly, that's, you'll end up with the absolute value of x less than 5. I've shown you all the detail I can possibly think of. So that step 12 would be basically the interval. And then down below at step 8, that would be an acceptable form of the power representation. And all of this, remember, represents this back here at step number 1. Okay, that's what it represents. Thank you. I'll see you in another video.